Hello and welcome to Cyber Guardian Academy. My name is Dr. Paula and today I'm talking about network analysis. We will start with communication analysis and it's a hands-on uh, uh, lab. So I will demonstrate you how to how to collect, uh, how to collect different packets, for example, and then how to analyze them and interpret them. So without wasting our time, let's jump in. So this is the outline of my presentation today. We will start with uh, the introduction of analysis. Why is it important and uh, how should we do it? Then I will show you, you know, we have already created this. If you have not yet created this virtual machine setup, I would recommend you to, to check the video, okay, where I discuss, uh, uh, I create this network, okay. And then we have uh, like uh, introduction to Wireshark. We will discuss how Wireshark is uh, unique. How is it better, for example, and why should we rely on it? Installation of Wireshark on Kali. I will demonstrate you how to how to install uh, Wireshark on Kali, and I will then demonstrate how the network traffic could be captured. Okay, so let's jump in. On this side, you are watching, for example, interface of Kali is here and here you have Ubuntu running okay so <clears throat> network analysis why is it even, even important okay so network analysis or communication analysis I would say is a quantitative and qualitative method method of what how information messages and decisions flow through a network okay network nodes and links for example so network mind you we have already covered uh, these basics just to be sure that we are on the same page a network is a physical system okay such as a computer network for example so we have created a computer network of uh, two virtual machines with one host machine right so we have a network of three machines at the moment so this is how the computer networks are created okay this way multiple organizations they create larger networks or, or segmented networks or multiple networks based on their needs. In figures you see here, this is the icon of uh, Wireshark, Nmap, and Packet Tracer. So Packet Tracer is a Cisco proprietary tool that simulates, you know, the networks. You could use this uh, tool to, to create networks, to understand how the network is working, for example, how different nodes are communicating. You can, you can learn from this Packet Tracer. I have in mind a video to create on this packet tracer as well. Nmap we have, okay, so this is for scanning. We will be using it in our next presentations. And why should we are going to install it today and learn how we can use this, okay? So without, uh, uh, let's jump directly. Now, what, what is exactly network analysis, okay? I told you, like, uh, this network analysis actually makes us understand how the, the data flows through the network. Okay, and based on this understanding how data flows through the network, we can actually, you know, see how this flow actually affects the, the efficiency from congestion point of view, reliability, how many packets were lost in the middle, for example, security, okay, and quality of the network services. I will talk about the security now. So security is, you know, is actually extremely important these days. And detecting and preventing cyber attacks is an extremely important task. So this way, for example, by just analyzing, analyzing the traffic on the network, for example, we can identify okay, whether this traffic is anomalous, is a gen, is a benign one, or it's it's perfectly fine. It's a normal one. Okay. So we can, based on this analysis, we can actually identify. The net from the network behavior if this is an attack or not okay and this is also important for example from troubleshooting perspective okay so from troubleshooting perspective means we will be able to diagnose and resolve packet network problems such as congestion for example latency how long this packet is taking to reach the network for example or the end node packet loss how many packets were lost in the middle and misconfiguration you know so by monitoring and analyzing the network performance and health for example okay so this way this network analysis is also extremely important to troubleshoot your your existing network 
then for the optimization as well. So it's important to, you know, uh, to, to, to optimize the network to work best for, for your scenario, for example. So how we can, uh, the, we, 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 can we can use this network analysis to improve and enhance the network performance. Okay, like and the capacity as well and the functionality as well. So by designing and testing different architectures, protocols and policies. So these are three main, there are many, there is a long list of applications that we can, we could use for uh, in network analysis, but these are the three most important ones. Now, okay, so now that you know, for example, why network uh, analysis is important, let's see our virtual machine setup, okay? So this is how our network looks like. We have a Kali here, for example, we created this lab earlier, if you, uh, we, we, we created this network, network setup earlier. I would suggest you to see lab zero, for example, of this series. So now here you have a Kali Linux installed, which is actually a target machine. I just wanted to re repeat this point. This is a target machine. These two virtual machines, this is Ubuntu, okay? And this one is meta exploitable. These two are victim machines, okay? So simple network comprising of three virtual machines hosted on my Windows machine. So in fact, there is a, network of four computers but i'm not using my my uh, my video, my host machine in in this network okay so now we have here you see for example we have uh, kali here if i could show you what the very first thing that i do is i have config i i check for example the ip addresses as you see on Ethernet zero, I have 10.0.2.15, which I could use for uh, for uh, for internet, for example. And then on Ethernet one, I have this 192.168.54.5. Okay, so and on uh, uh, Ubuntu machine, for example, because in this lab we are not using Meta Exploitable at the moment because uh, it's sufficient uh, to have the network of two virtual machines and uh, you know to understand these packets. So here, that's why I have here. Uh, we this virtual machine and it has this IP address of 192.168.54.3. Okay, slash 24. So you see here these two machines, Kali and Ubuntu, they are on the same network. Okay, so but, but still, just to be sure if they are still on the same network, what I, I do, for example, I ping, I'm on Kali now. Ping, yeah. So it's pinging, control Z, let's say, and I ping 192.168.54.3. Let's see if it is pinged. Yeah, a bit slow, but it's still different. Let's make it a bit bigger. Okay. So now we have, we can ping this machine, Ubuntu, which is perfectly fine, and it, which means we are connected. Okay. So this is one ping that I sent to to you know this Ubuntu machine, but what if if I ping www or minus C? Let's say we are sending ten pings to www.google.com. Let's say okay. So yes, so from in it is zero Ethernet zero, I'm able to ping google.com, and from Ethernet one, I'm able to ping my virtual machine Ubuntu. Okay, so we are on the uh, we are well connected now. Now, what is Wireshark, okay? So Wireshark actually is an open source tool that lets you capture and analyze packet traffic, network traffic, okay? So Wireshark is an open source. What does it this mean? It means it's a free software. You can download it, okay? You can play with it, you can distribute it, do whatever you want to do, for example. It's open source, okay? It's completely free. Now, okay, if we discuss features of Wireshark, the very first thing that comes into mind is it's open source. Okay, Wireshark is completely free of cost, number one. Number two, it can capture live traffic. Okay, so capture network packets from various sources. You have to you have to mention explicitly on from which interface you are actually you you want to monitor that traffic. Okay, so we it uses it can use Ethernet. I will show you in the next slide as well. It will show you you know the Ethernet, uh, ETH zero, ETH one, like in this case we saw, and uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB, whatever. 
source you would like to define okay then it can display filters okay so you can analyze those capture packets based on different filters such as protocols for example in in display filter if i write dns it will print me only it will show me only the packets of dns protocol or based on the ip address so based on the port numbers for example you know so we have we can use these filters later on and we will see them then we will then it supports protocol analysis as well so inspect the details of each packet i will show you how for example the headers of each of the packets we seen and we can then after analysis we can save and you know those packets we can export them we can import them we can play with those packets okay and this data could be saved as pcap file which is actually original file, uh, original format of, uh, of of this Wireshark. You could save it as CSV, as XML, whatever way you want. Okay. So Wireshark actually, to be honest, is widely used by network professionals. Even researchers they are widely using these uh, these tools, this tool. Okay, Wireshark. So and it is because I, I told you it's completely free. Um, uh, Additionally, you know, the most important benefits that it provides is like it can modify, you can modify, you can use it, you can distribute it, you know, while sharp without any cost or restriction. So this is a, a very nice uh, addition. And it supports over 3000 network protocols, which is really great, which is really great. So, you know, with free of cost and with uh, this much support, I would love to use this while sharp. And it has an extremely useful user interface. So we can navigate through different panels, for example, and see how things are working. Mind you, it has a large community as well. So you can find many tutorials, many, you know, conferences, many certificates, podcasts, you know, live, for example, to understand if you want to learn Wireshark. Now, let's install Wireshark on Kai. Now, <clears throat> the very first thing is like, if you ask me to tell you the process of installing Kali. It is composing of uh, composed of only three main things, okay? Three main commands. Now, in Kali, for example, the very first thing that must be done in order to install effectively any protocol or any packet, for example, what you do, we do sudo opt update. So this is the very first thing that we do, okay? Sudo opt update, it will update, it will bring, it will upgrade if something is missing from my system, okay? So this is the very first thing that you will do. The second thing is you are required to install it. sudo apt. So this is simply the command apt to install Wireshark. Okay. So here you with this command you should be able to download this Wireshark from the main repository and install it on your computer. Okay. So here if you click this, it will uh, you know since it's already installed on my computer 4.2.2 it says is its version it didn't ask but for you it will ask you to confirm and you have to hit y you know so here for example you have to hit this y in order to confirm okay that you want to install this so once you have uh, uh, typed y and hit enter it will be automatically installed and you will see uh, you know uh, you will be uh, you will be able to get the, the terminal back, okay? So now, here, for example, you could check. The very first thing that you could use is like we uh, Wireshark minus minus version. You could check the version because I told you already I have this Wireshark 4.2.2 uh, installed. You could also check and uh, tell me in, in comments which, uh, uh, which version of Kali is installed in your machine, okay? So now, Everything is set. We have, uh, you know, Ubuntu install. We have, we have Ubuntu. We have Kali on the network, and let's uh, let's capture the packets now. Okay. So <clears throat> here I have written the steps. Now, first example, you need to start Wireshark. So I have another terminal opened here, which is which I'm using for opening Wireshark. So here you see, simply typing Wireshark on Kali is sufficient. Okay. So when you hit enter. Okay, Wireshark, no typing error. Wireshark okay. should be working. So now here, the very first thing that I would like to show you here is like we can see a list of devices to capture packets from the main window. Okay, so here you see ETH1, any ETH0, loopback, Bluetooth monitor, NF log. So these are different interfaces that you could, you know, you could use to collect the, to, to capture packet on, for example. Okay. So click the blue shark. So this one is 
act exactly when you hit it for example when you click it it will start capturing packets okay and uh, you should be able to see in the display filter all the traffic that is going through okay so click the red button if you want to install this if you want to stop it and save this uh, packets for example so this data you could click this and it will ask you where to save that data okay so without wasting time let's and then you can save that data as well so let's go now here on eth1 if you you know over or over at this uh, this interface you see you have an ip address of 192.168.54.5 so this network mind you actually is used to connect you to the ubuntu okay then you have eth0 which actually connects me to the internet okay so net network is connected on this and 10.0.2.15 okay is, is the ip address and this loopback is your internal ip you know so what i'm going to do is for example i'm let's say i'm using any for example okay any and i i'm hitting this blue button so you will instantly start seeing different packets captured okay so for example if we ping from this machine now for example if i open this osboxes.org just to give you an example if i ping 192.168.5.5 no 54.5 actually is the ip address of kali okay so if i do this ping what will happen so you see here some activity has been started here okay so you see here on uh, uh, on kali we are we are capturing icmp related uh, protocol related data so what is this icmp icmp is internet control message protocol okay so these utilities ping tracer tracer out for example I belong to this protocol okay now what we are seeing here is like this if i break this interface in front of you let's say we have here commands command panels simply okay if i have yeah so you see this is what you already did you selected some interface and you can see a list of packets being captured okay so these packets are being captured now and here just to show you for example uh, here this one this one for example they are commands command menus this is your display filter it's already written apply a display filter so if you want to write icmp it will capture icmp packets dns it will capture dns packets arp address resolution protocol it will uh, you know it will capture address resolution protocols everything you got my point so this is actually the display filter that you could use uh, to, to capture packets for you for example based on the ip address if you want to capture uh, 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 want to capture traffic of this interface this ip address you can collect for example or different protocols whatever way you want where you would like to okay so this is a display filter now this one you see here this is this lists down this in this part actually lists down all the packets for example okay that are being captured okay so this you can say for example it just lists down all the packets okay now here for example i showed you command menus filter to use now here you see another thing that is very very important is i would like to show you here for example uh, different things on frame one for example so what is this about i told you if you have not yet uh, covered osi reference model i would suggest i would strongly suggest to go through another video basics of networking okay and you will be able to understand these concepts now what i'm saying is practically you should be able to see how different packets are going through the interface so if i'm clicking this frame zero one frame what does it mean on which protocol on which layer for example this protocol is working this frame if i could increase the size of this for example let's see so now this frame you see here 100 bytes on wire so this actually represents physical layer okay so physical on physical layer we are capturing 800 uh, bits of uh, data for example okay on interface any because we have not defined any interface and id zero here there are different things i would say here another important thing is an encapsulation this encapsulation means wrapping up the data with the header so if the data flows from uh, from sender to receiver of course so from sender for example when the data is going this process is called encapsulation so from application data 
So that the data will pass to the presentation layer, presentation header will be stamped on it, for example. Similarly, when it is passing through the, the, the physical layer, okay, all the headers will have their uh, headers appended on that particular packet. This is called encapsulation. So the same packets, the same headers actually are, are removed at the receiving end, which is actually the process of de-encapsulation. Fine. So now here you see here the role is ICMP, for example, the different things. These are all related to first layer of OSI reference model frame. Okay. So here you see here all the timings, time delta, blah blah blah, color, yeah, everything. So for example, on the second layer of OSI reference model here, okay. So you see here this layer. I told you that on layer two you will be able to find only you know, MAC addresses. So machines are talking in terms of MAC addresses. So here you see 0800 20, FD. So this is MAC address, okay? And they are, I told you about unicasting, you know, it's one-to-one -one communication between uh, between different machines, between two machines, link layer, address protocol, Ethernet one we are using, for example. And these are different things related to layer now, on layer 3 of OSI reference model, you know, we are working on IP addresses. All the devices, layer 3 devices, when I say it means routers, they are working on, on, on IP addresses, okay? So, here you see, we have IP address 4, version 4. This is IP address 192.168.54.3, for example. This is IP address, okay? So, they are on the layer 3 now. We are on the layer 3 now, and the source address is because we pinged from Ubuntu, so the source address is 192.168.54.3. The destination was 5, which is our Kali machine, okay? And here you see different things, packets, uh, how they look like, version 4, differentiated services, you know, and identification. These are different flags, you know, you should be able to see. And also like here, um, you know, the source address, 192.168.54.3, it's... It is evident that the, the communication is happening between these two machines, okay? So now, then we have ICMP. ICMP actually is a, you know, kind of a layer 4 protocol, not between, runs between layer 3 and layer 4, okay? So it's a, just to check the connectivity between the machines. So here you see you have different, uh, you know, different fields that you can explore for example we, then you have here the data okay so the data looks like this fine so which means we are good to go and here i had i had minimized it earlier so here you can see different uh, you know packets displayed here you see all the data for example if you hit this one it contains this timestamp okay if you click uh, for example ip address here for example you should be able to see part of this ip address okay uh, all encrypted and time to live you know contains uh, this this byte contains this time to live information so this way you know uh, we are able to capture the traffic now the point is if you want to capture the protocol of arp what is this arp address resolution protocol is the protocol that maps the internet protocol ip address to media access control Okay, to make, make access control. So the point is layer 3 device needs to communicate with layer 2 in order to effectively communicate, right? So these layer 2 and layer 3, because they speak a different language, how will they understand? This protocol helps us to, you know, translate IP address into MAC and MAC into IP address, right? So here ARP helps to find the MAC address of a host from its known IP address. I want to show you here, for example, if I stop, uh, let's say here, for example, yeah. So if I stop, yeah, here, if I do ARP space minus A, you, you are able to see here, you know, four IP addresses, you see. So 10.0.2.1, this is actually the router's IP. We can double check this. Route space minus N. So if we do this route space minus n, you should be able to see a complete route. So here we have 10 dot, yes, it's a default gateway and it's a, uh, belong, it belongs to this network. Then we have another network 54.0 and which is on Ethernet 1, fine. Now, clear, 
If I do ARP space minus D, it means I'm in deleting all the entries of ARP space, ARP, okay, address resolution, so that it should ask, right? So when you click this ARP space minus D, you know, pseudo, sorry, pseudo ARP space minus D. ARP need host name. Okay, ARP space minus A, yeah. Okay, fine. We have this and we clear this, for example. Okay, now what we can do, for example, we can check the different data captured. Okay, so here, for example, if we see ARP and hit enter, we should be able to find, for example, the traffic related to this particular protocol. Okay, so if I click the very first packet that is captured, for example, if I stop it now, okay, if I stop it now, the very first packet that I captured, for example, so you see here, this protocol actually asks, if I could increase this, this protocol actually asks who has 192.168.54.3 because it has to create a ARP table, okay? And tell 192.168.54.5. So it is asking Kali who has 192.168.54.3 IP address. Fine. Now, this one, 62, this another packet of length 62, this is a reply. Okay. And here it tells 192.168.54.3 is at. So these are MAC addresses. This is MAC address, this is IP address. So they are, you know, they are translated to L, okay, 54.3 is on this particular MAC address. It has this particular MAC address, okay. So similarly, 10.0.2.3, where is it located? ARP is asking, okay. And it is, it is asking this 15, okay. 2.15, which is Kali machine. So it's, uh, it's saying it is located on this MAC address. So you see, for example, this ARP protocol translates between MAC address to IP address and IP address to MAC address. It maps them. Okay. So this way, you know, we should be able to understand the difference between IPs and MAC addresses. So now, you know, we have uh, ARP address protocol covered. Here you see again, first layer. Then second layer and ARP is a is a uh, is, is works on the top of the second layer and below the third layer. So here again you see our ARP MAC address, the game of MAC address, and this address resolution protocol you see here. So it, it works in between zero uh, layer two and layer three of OSI Fine. So then, for example, what if if we check here DNS? Okay, so you see here we have DNS data as well. DNS is domain name naming service. Okay, and domain names naming service is like uh, it translates between human readable domain names. So, you, for example, humans cannot remember IP addresses. How many IP addresses would you remember? It's difficult. So the point is we should have something human readable or human memorizable data. So, for example, you have uh, www.google.com, let's say here, for example, if we have, we are here, just, just give you, giving you an example. So, when we ping, for example, minus three, let's say, I'm just pinging with three ping, three, uh, three times www.google.com. So, you see here, because we can remember google.com, it's perfectly fine, but will you be able to remember this IP address? Okay, so 216.58.204.132, it will be extremely boring, it will be extremely difficult. So this is where this DNS server, this DNS service comes in, okay. So DNS actually translates between, you know, human readable domain names to IP address. Okay, DNS is often called, let's say, the phone book of the internet, because it allows users to access website and services by using easy to remember. You see, I wrote google.com, which is easy to remember, instead of long and complex IP addresses. You got my point. So, this way, this protocol, we can capture, using this protocol, we can capture the data related to, to 
TLS. Okay, so here, for example, you see we have uh, all the DNS related packets captured. Source is 10.0.2.15, and this is how the packet looks like. So, if you click DNS, for example, you should be able to see across different layers. Okay, so this DNS actually works on the fourth layer of the reference model. So here you see you have another added entry of user data ground protocol, 59658, destination port 53. So these, for example, the first layer, again, the same information, the data that was captured on wire, okay? The time, the delta, epoch arrival time, everything. Second, you will find, you know, the source address, make address, I would say, and the device name if you want, for example. Okay, and on third, you will be able to see, you know, IP related information. So, source address, uh, you should be able to see the destination address, uh, you should be able to see different. Uh, this, this will be, become a theoretical class if I explain everything. So, uh, at the, this point, it's sufficient enough to, to know that these points, they actually refer to different layer of OSI reference model. Okay, so user datagram protocol. We discussed it already. If you have forgotten this user datagram protocol, I would say in order to refresh, you should access this uh, this uh, video on basics of networking. Okay, user datagram protocol where I explain the difference between UDP and TCP. Okay, so this way we have we can capture DNS data, DNS related traffic. Okay, now the next step is what is for example, ICMP control message protocol, internet control message protocol. So I showed you, you know, you can capture ICMP related data. If you write here simply ICMP, okay, you should be able to find all the ICMP related packets, fine. Now, ICMP is a network protocol that is used to send error messages and operational information between. This is what I already mentioned. ICMP can also be used for diagnostic purposes. Yes, if, I'm not, if I'm not getting any reply from my machine, for example, I would say it's not connected or there is an error, for example, okay? So ICMP protocol is also a very important protocol to, to, to understand. So here, for example, you see all the packets are captured from this, this protocol. Now, how to filter by IP address? So simply, you know, here, for example, uh, in the uh, in, in this display filter, you are using uh, different protocols, ICMP, DNS, uh, for example, or HTTP. Because you have not yet opened HTTP, there will be no there will be no packet at all because you have not yet captured anything. Okay, so if I if you want me to, for example, give you a test, what I will do, for example, I will open here browser. Let's say. I'm not sure if it is working. Yeah, here, for example. So, because, yeah, so the internet is, because I, I am using a proxy, I will, I will explain you later. So, I would not be able to use this at the moment. So, you will not be able to capture HTTP, but if it was internet, for example, you could have easily collected, uh, easily, you know, captured the packets as well. So this is how, you know, you can play with these packets. Similarly, for example, if you want to use another filter, let's say this one, okay. So this is, this was my source address, 10.0.2.15, right? If you click this, you should be able to find the data related to this, uh, you know, this IP address. So you, so you see here, source 10.0.2.15, it used the DHCP protocol, dynamic host control protocol. So, actually, I told you that, uh, you know, we just assigned an IP address 2.15 on the Kali. Then, you know, there was a DHCP server uh, on, on this Kali and it is used to connect. Uh, wh whoever is going to connect with this machine, for example, this will fade. Okay, this will be assigned an IP address using DHCP. Similarly, you see here we have traffic. Uh, on this interface, we are we have been collecting DHCP related acknowledgement requests, DNS related data, you know everything. And for example, if I could use uh, another IP address, because maybe yeah, this one. You remember now what was the IP address? This IP address actually 
is of Google. So we didn't capture anything about this uh, at the moment. So let's uh, let's try to capture. So www.google, sorry, ping, if, if I would say ping minus C3, www.google.com. So here, for example, uh, in the previous packets we didn't capture, but if I run it again, continue without saving, it should be able to capture. Just a second. You see? So we are able to capture this uh, this uh, this uh, protocol uh, from this IP address as well. So you see here 216.58.209.36 is actually the IP address of Google. Okay. So now you see there are different fields. These are different timings, for example. Okay. At what time this packet was sent or received? The type of the packet. Okay, is, was it a request? Was it a reply? Like uh, here, for example, for this packet, it was generated from 15. Kali, it was uh, sent. Uh, send, it was sent to Google.com, for example, using ICMP protocol, and the length of this packet was 100 bytes only. Okay, so echo exactly this. So this data was sent, and the time to live was 64. And these are sequence number as well. So you see here, sequence number means like it will it will ensure provide you reliability. Okay, how many packets were lost in between? For example, you will be able to know. So this way, you know, we play with this device uh, with Kali, for example, you can capture traffic of different things. So this is what I have showed you. Let's capture the, the we, we captured the traffic of uh, IP address, another IP address. So this way, you know, you can play it with this, uh, play with this uh, tool. Now, in summary, what we have learned, in summary, we have learned about the basics of communication and network analysis. Why do we even need it? How to use Wireshark to capture and analyze network traffic, okay? So we have now captured this traffic, for example. We learned how to install and run Wireshark and Kali. Uh, we demonstrated some examples of network traffic protocols, such as I showed you ICMP, I showed you DCP, DNS, I showed you DNS, uh, I showed you HTTP, no, not show you HTTP, I showed you DHCP, but uh, DHCP here, for example, yeah, so you can stop it, for example, and here you can DHCP, so it will capture, it will show you all that. Uh, all the packet captured okay doing this so we discussed uh, these packets uh, and we discussed also some uh, some some fields here in in this panel as well and okay and we discussed some applications and benefits of network analysis like i showed you i told you why they are uh, why doing this uh, is extremely important in 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 security perspective from uh, uh, troubleshooting perspective and from optimization. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this presentation and learned something new. Thanks for watching. And if uh, you have any questions, drop me a message on, on, on comment, please. And don't forget to hit like.